onions, you got a big pot of sauce, and you cook it all day, all day. Well, our motto is, is we cook all day so you don't have to. So what I've got here are three different sauces that we prepare. Two that are meat sauces. Our uh, bello more is made with my wife's spicy meatballs. All the meats are natural and organic in this one. And our traditional three meat sauce over here is from my family from Naples. Uh, it's made with mild lake Italian sausage, chuck roast, and pork sparrows. So my wife has kind of spiced up her meatballs and got a nice little kick to it. And then we have a vegetarian version that's made with organic carrots, organic red peppers, organic red onions, and portobello mushrooms, all locally sourced from local farms. Um, the three meat sauce and the vegetarian sauce are both gluten-free, and the vegetarian sauce is also vegan. So we're going to do a vegan vegetarian style tonight, along with the two meat sauces. The meats that we cook in our sauces actually um, cook in the sauce all day long, just like you would do naturally. The meatballs and the three meats, and then before we jar, we take the meats out and freeze them. So there's about 3% of the meat in the jars themselves. You know how meat uh, hamburger does, it'll flake off in little bits and pieces. <laughs> Same way with the chuck roast over on the three meat sauce. It flakes off as well. Uh, the three meats and the uh, uh, meatballs come in a little tray like this and are available at our kitchen. And I'm going to turn it over to my wife so she can explain a little bit of our story. So again, we are Sal and Val, and a lot of people want to know how did we even get started in this business. With the reception kit, um, Sal and I both lost jobs, lost careers that we had been at for over 25 years. Um, we were laid off, and when we tried to find work again, we were told that we were too old. And only in our 50s, we, we couldn't believe that. So, we do what all good Italians do when they get bummed out. We cook and invite friends and family. This is what we do. So, uh, with that, one of our friends has suggested maybe we ought to think about turning our sauces that our friends and family had enjoyed into a business. And we thought that was a great idea, but we had to use every penny that we had to live on during that time because we had absolutely no money. And um, we had friends that helped us our very first batch of sauce that are here tonight that we love dearly. They actually helped us get through that first year. It was very hard to try to even survive. And um, they gave us the money to make our first batch of sauce. And we were we entered in a uh, local high school craft, craft fair and sold our sauces. And it was really funny. I was so nervous when we were setting up that I set the jar on the end of the table and it fell off. Thank you. 
So our goal was to make a sauce that you can pull off your shelf with a great fabulous meal and minutes with it that are healthy. So no preservatives, no antibiotics, no nitrates, nothing bad in our sauces. And we cook low and slow the old-fashioned way. We um, learned that co-packers do a little bit different process. So our heart was to own our own kitchen and make them the way we make them from home. We just make them a big bag, bigger batch. So we say we cook for good health. <coughs> so what I'm doing here right now is I actually just opened up a jar. This is the jars that we use for our demos. It's the same sauce that's in these jars that you see on the table and around, and also sold here at Provisions. Yes, right for that. We don't put labels on them because we recycle our jars, and we tried soaking the labels off our jars because we believe in recycling. And they know so, nice. so good. That is Italian for it doesn't work. <laughs> so our demo sauces, we just don't label them. So what I'm doing here is, this is the frozen meatballs that we defrosted and reheated in the oven at 350 degrees for about 35, 40 minutes. I'm going to pop them in the jar of sauce that we have here, just to give it a little extra bang for the buck there. I'll get a few out, then I can just tip this over and get it in here. And you can also, if you're in a hurry, you can empty it into a microsafe weight, this microsafe. Microwave safe dish. Thank you. Cool. And, um, you can reheat them very quickly in the microwave. We try not to use the microwave any more than we have to, so we like it. We like it fast, but we like it healthy. So there's the meat the balls. <laughs> and we do not have these in any stores yet, so you have to get them directly from our kitchen. We have a little store now inside of our kitchen and garden building. You can come in and buy our fresh pastas, the meats, and our sauces. Ancient Grains is the name of the company, and it's delicious. Okay, very important. You hear people say, oil your water, don't oil your water. Salt your water, don't salt your water. Don't oil your water, and salt it like it tastes like the ocean. So what I'm going to do is I have three pots of water boiling. I'm going to salt the water. And I'm really conservative on, on salt, so our salt sources, we use uh, Celtic salt that has Celtic minerals, salt. so it's a little healthier than table salt. But it really does make a difference because your pasta is not salted, so you really want to be sure you salt your water well. So you saw me do the vegetarian in the middle. This is my vegetarian spoon. That's what I'm using for stirring the salty water. <laughs> So now my spoon is clean. Get you a little good taste in the water. Oh. I mean, it's got to be salty. It's the only salt that the pasta will take is when it's cooking. Can you oversalt? No. I don't think that you can really oversalt it. If it is a little too salty when you taste it, you can add some of your pasta water to it. Right. Yes, I have on set Parkinson's disease. <laughs> so I shake like crazy. It's not that I'm nervous or anything. <laughs> <laughs> This took my Nono and my Nana all day to do this. So we're going to get it going here. And as soon as the water gets hot and the sauce gets a little hotter, we'll be ready to go. Now, my family, the way that we ate traditionally was. Papa cooked the meat in the sauce all day long, and then he took the meat out, put it in a Pyrex dish. Uh -oh. So now, have you considered publishing a little 
could look with these different ways to use this box? Absolutely. Yes, because this, like I said, this will be one of very many different ways. You, you've heard of my green bean and my asparagus. The vegetarian makes a great crock pot chili. You can put a jar of Val's vegetarian in the crock pot with three cans of your favorite beans. We prefer the organic black beans. And if we want to leave it vegetarian, we just turn it on high, let it cook for 10 hours. That breaks the, the beans out and down just a little bit, really thickens the chili up. And you can use meat. Sometimes you'll brown hamburger, some baby hunters in here. You can use venison in that, stew meat in there, and just let it cook all day.
Well, he's doing that. I'm going to work on the salad. This is just uh, um, romaine lettuce and some red cabbage and some red organic onions. I'm going to put a little bit of fresh olives on it. And I'm going to salt and pepper it. And then we'll make our dressing.
always taste your food before you serve it. That's how we keep our firm body. That's my boy is bigger. Good. So you want it to just have a little chew to it so you don't overcook it because if you overcook it, it's going to be mush. And another thing that we do is you take your sauce, and you'll see me, I'm going to put sauce on the platter first, and then put the pasta on the platter, and then mix some extra sauce into it, rather than just putting a blob on top, so that it gets all the way through everything.
behind you. Oh, we can change the tiles. Okay. You ready for the next one? I am. Okay, here's our three me. Watch your hand. And here's a slot of smooth that I bought. Take a couple of the forks and toss it like a salad. Yeah, easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> 